over a year ago, we were suddenly faced with the problem of, of quite a lot of crude oil washing up along the beaches in the Gulf of Mexico. When I see people cleaning oil off of the beaches and they're raking up the sand, I think, you know, maybe we could come up with a design using some of the theories that we're developing, a design on how to prepare the beaches so that you could really trap the oil in a very uh, compact way and so that it would be much easier to clean up than what they're doing now. At UCLA, Dr. Bertozzi's team is using mathematical models to analyze the behavior of oil and sand mixtures on beaches that result from oil spills. They dug down into the sand and you can see this is no more than about five inches under the sand. There's a thick line of, of very sticky crude oil and this, is, this, this line is buried deep enough so that it's not going to evaporate so quickly so it remains in its liquid form. So this is uh, oil that's not visible if you're just walking on the beach, you actually have to dig down and there it is. So I called up people in the, who are actually working in the Gulf and I learned about the buried oil that occurred after the hurricane and this of course is another, you can't control nature so just because you have an oil spill doesn't mean that you're not going to get hurricanes afterwards. And so that's another question, how does the oil end up buried in this uniform layer and how do we track that and prevent it and clean up that kind of effect as well. So if you take a viscous oil and you mix it with sand or some kind of particulates and you put it on a slope and you watch what happens, well there are a number of things that can happen. So Criteria such as size of sand grains, viscosity of oil, and incline can all influence cleanup after oil spills. If you tell me the concentration of the particles, I can tell you exactly what angle of incline you, sh you would need to get the, the oil to end up in one location or the oil and sand to stay mixed together. I can tell you that now. I mean, we have a, an exact theory for that. And we picked up some sand off of the beach and we mixed it with our silicon oil. This is polydimethyl siloxane mixed with uh, beach sand. And in here, in this example here, the beach sand is clumping up with pockets of oil in between the clumps. So these two just have different volumes. These have different concentrations of sand. So we want to understand and we want to be able to model those kinds of behaviors. What we've discovered just working on our problem is that it's very easy for an engineer to write down really complicated equations that have all sorts of different pieces of physics in them, but but you know, to solve those you have to have 10 supercomputers and you'll all you'll get is one answer for one set of initial parameters. What we want to be able to do is develop general theories to say what are the most important aspects of the problem and what other physical aspects can you just neglect. And then we want to be able to reduce the problem to a solvable math problem where a student can take it and say, hey, you know, I can tell you the general theory for all these different ranges of parameters. This is how the system's going to behave and, and these other issues are just not important. And that's the kind of, that's where modeling is really important. Dr. Bertozzi's experience with the Deepwater Horizon oil spill is an example of how research can suddenly become prominent due to the real world need for its applications. It was sad for the people of the Gulf. At the same time, we saw all of these things going on in the, in the movies and the pictures uh, from the Gulf of Mexico, and we thought, you know, there's a lot of science that could be done to help, the, to help maybe not the current oil spill, but the next oil spill.